So taking a look at the map here, it looks like I can go. It looks like both the places are pretty much gonna take me where I want to go. I can go up this. I can go up the hill. I think over here, or I can go straight ahead down this direction, down this slope. I think they're both gonna take me where I want to go. Oh, was that a chest up there? Did I see? Oh, maybe they won't both well, take me where I want to go. It looks like that's a broken. Yeah, that bridge up there looks broken. Okay, ambiguity lost. For a brief bit there, I thought that I could go up there. All right, I'll have to remember that there's a potion location here if I ever need more. But if I, if uh, if the Grey Warden Adamant Fortress area was anything to judge by, uh, they'd probably give me more potion caches than I need in these story missions. Because the difficulty curve really, uh... Oh my... <laughs> What the hell? What was that? What was that? It didn't happen again. Okay. That was some interesting uh, physics reaction there. I wanted the Arbor Blessing, but was, what was Blessing was my mad jump skills, apparently. That's legit. Okay. But yeah, so far, they aren't really on top of the difficulty curve for most of the story missions post Skyhold. It's cra it, is, it, it is really weird. Like, this series has been going on for an incredibly long time. We're almost at 100 episodes now. This will be, ep I believe, this will be episode 90, uh, 98. Because full disclosure, I just started my recording session. I just, I did only do one episode of Wood Pride at Rot and then stop for the day because I, I was preoccupied for the day, unfortunately. But uh, makes me extra aware of what episode it is. Uh, it's weird thinking how long this thing is because I start thinking of stuff that happened a long time ago. And when I think of those things, it feels like that was a different game. <laughs> like, I think about how... Remember how difficult it was for me to defeat Alexius? Like, I had so much difficulty with Alexius, I had to load an earlier save and then rewind... Replay the entire uh, story mission off-camera so that I would have more potions for the fight because I didn't have any and I was getting wrecked. And then, uh, like, I beat Envy on my first try, but beating Envy for, on my first try took, like, a solid... Uh, that was like a full half an hour boss fight, practically, me being on the first try. Like, someone probably thought it was tedious, but I was super... It was grueling, and I was proud of myself, because I came out on top after all that effort. And, uh... That was this series. <laughs> that was like 60 episodes ago, but still. Like... And that's that's what's e that's extra crazy, too, is that you can, like... The, time, the number of episodes between now and then... Uh, not only are the episodes longer than they are in any other show that I do, but... On top of the, the crazy duration of those episodes... That there's like more episodes in just number between now and then than most of my shows last in duration and by most I mean basically all of them uh, Dark Souls 2 is roughly in a in the ballpark of a hundred episodes, but that's including I'm just grabbing all of this rock apparently like Dark Souls 2 is a, is 99 episodes I think but that's with all three DLC packs mashed in there and me being really thorough about stuff and having shorter like 20 minute episodes so even like, if, I, if I'd done Dark Souls 2 episodes at the length that this Dragon Age series is at, that would have been like a 60 or less episode series, including the DLC. That's crazy to me. This is... This has been an or ordeal. <laughs> like, I'm gonna actually miss this game when it's over, and not just because it's good, but because I'll be like... Like, so conditioned to playing this game not so regularly for the purposes of the channel and so on. That it's just actually gonna feel weird to have it be gone. That that and then hey, maybe just in that maybe that'll be just in time for them to announce new DLC. Still though, I definitely need to finish this game because we have a number of new stuff coming out soon. So we have Red Temple Behemoths. I haven't seen these guys in any great numbers since uh let's see. The Fall of Haven was a big one. I had to fight multiple Red Temple Behemoths, I think, over the course of trying to crank that uh crank that uh catapult. I remember someone leaving a comment saying, Oh my god, you found such an easier way of doing that. Like, they were blown away by the fact that I did it. I think I might have done it on my first try. But specifically what made it work was that I, I told, I think, Sarah in my party, or whoever, whoever the ranged person in my party was, I just said, Hey, you go run over and, and do that crank. Everyone else is going to fight and be a distraction. And that worked so well in a way that uh, I guess other people don't. I guess, I guess other people sit there and fight the boss fight for a prolonged amount of time and eventually take it down. And then they can finally crank, do the crank when there's no more fighting happening. So kind of proud of myself for that. I guess that's the biggest, that's the biggest tragedy about the game's lack of uh, proper scaling. Uh, is that uh, I had to make really interesting tactical decisions in the first 30 or 40 episodes of this game. And that, that kind of went away. And I kind of missed that. But the good news is... Uh, 
Let's see, I'm playing uh, Dying Light right now, and that's tense at least, if not always tactical. But man, Darkest Days, I mean, a Darkest uh, Dungeon, that is a tactical game. So that's scratching the itch that this game kind of stops scratching in the second half of the game. So now I get to enjoy them all for their own, for, their, for their, both of them for their own separate reasons. That's, that's a pleasant change, that's fine. I'm okay with that. Oh, we have a bad guy. He's trying to be all sneaky invisible, now he's sneaky and fucking frozen. Yeah. I enjoy, I enjoy that frostbite. I, I said that wrong. I meant, to, I meant to be like, how do you enjoy that frost? Does it bite? And then in my head, Anthony Carboni pops in and is like, that's your dad joke for today. I've been listening to too many podcasts. Uh, <laughs> so it's really tragic, actually. The Red Templars are still under control. So we're fighting Red Templars and uh, and we're fighting the Grey Wardens that are still under the control of Corypheus. Which is dark, but I suppose... Uh, it, I guess it's more compelling of an opponent than what is often the case. Because, <laughs> uh, I mean, being Dragon Age, uh, and really a Bioware game in general, Bioware enemies tend to just be some kind of, like, faceless enemy that is just there to be bad. Like, uh, in Mass Effect, you have the Geth, and they're just like, you're, you're fighting robot creatures. Then in the next game, they have the Collectors, and they're just other alien things. And eventually they contextualize it. At, at first it just seems like the Geth are evil, but you find out that like, oh, they're under, they're being influenced, they're being controlled, much like what's going on here. And that, that it, it all fits together in that way, I suppose. But in, in many RPGs you have faceless enemies that are, don't matter. Like, in when I play Shadow of Mordor, I don't feel bad for killing orcs, because they're like these comically evil enemies. But in this game, you feel worse, because they're making you fight... Did I go into... I think, okay, I thought I went in a circle, but I'm definitely not going in a circle if, if, if this is what the map looks like. Alright, so we're going the right way. There's the, oh, oh, a fight is currently happening. Let's blow them up. AoE weakening. No, no one needs to die this day. Actually, hella people going to die this day. I don't know if you know, got the memo. Uh, <laughs> there's gonna be a body count. Everyone's gonna be dead. So sorry. But yeah, I guess because they're Red Templars and Wardens, it helps had add some more depth to the enemy and make you feel differently about them because they are people who are at least trying to do good at some point and now they have become the ultimate force of evil because without these guys, there's no army. Like if these guys had not fallen for Corypheus' traps, then Corypheus would kind of be alone. And he's big and he's a big, scary, super powerful, magical, uh, Tevinter Magister asshole. But, uh, he's still... Oh, that guy's in danger. I should go fight him before I loot anything else. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that, uh, potion cache in a second here, because just like, uh, with Adam, man, they're clearly just gonna keep giving me more. So we'll go to Sarah, use the potion real quick. That takes us to a total of three used potions so far. And I'm gonna replenish those real quick, because clearly... This is a linear area, and I'm not going to be coming back, so I'm, I should probably just grab these as I pass them. Make sense? Watch them immediately contradict me by make, sending me backwards. Hello, Red Templar Horror. Uh, don't mind me, I'm just going to, uh, dispel that shield off you. That pesky shield, and then I'm going to freeze you. There we go, now that you're frozen, let's just wait, wait on that guy. Oh, there's a shadow. I wish I had frozen that guy. Alright, so that, that shatter combo probably got triggered, which is good. Go barrier Vasti to keep his tanking capacity up. Vasti is just undefeatable. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Uh, I clearly would have not minded having a mage. Uh, I think the mate. I think in every future playthrough of. Uh, <coughs> sorry about that. I think in every future playthrough I have of Dragon Age Inquisition, I'm probably gonna play as a mage. They're ma definitely major rogue, not warrior so much. But I see, I think I see Mage as the most duplicated, uh, most duplicatable class. Like, whenever I make a party in this game, it'll probably be two Mages, one Rogue, one Warrior seems to be what works really well for me. Because you have two, like, two Barriers, two Dispels, two Revivals, like, that's really great. And then you can customize everyone else accordingly. Uh, and then from there you can either have, uh, a Rogue and a Warrior, with the Warrior being your tank. Or, let's bubble, oh, there we go, successful bubble on the tank. Uh, you you need someone to tank, so that'll probably be a a some sort of uh, warrior, probably a champion. 
And then from there you could have one rogue for extra DPS or one or you could bring uh, iron bull along for the His melee DPS although not I, as a general rule I don't see a lot of people using iron bull unless they're playing on an easier difficulty and just feel like bringing random people that just like to talk What is Vasti doing? He's in an infinite shouting loop. Dude, you can't reach them from there. <laughs> Silly AI. I could have intervened and, and made him do smarter things, but I kind of want him to watch. <laughs> Let's knock some people on their asses. There we go. Yeah, go get that guy while he's sitting down. He won't take that sitting down. Oh, wait, he will. <laughs> but yeah, I, I see... Uh, it's I think it's important to pick your main character class based on... I mean, frankly, if, if, you're pl if you're playing the way some people do, then you just pick your favorite class because a lot of people only control their main character ever. Uh, that, uh, that's something I discovered. I've discovered that from uh, the, the subreddit, and I've discovered it from watching my friend Andrew play it during the quickie we recorded for Sad Games of this game, where we played like the little prologue real quick. Uh, there's definitely a lot of there's definitely people who will just make their custom character, and that's who they're going to play as the entire game, and their party is just there to help. And they're just gonna, they'll level them up and equip them with stuff, but they're not gonna control them. And just let the AI take over the whole game. I know, I don't see myself ever playing that game because I like switching characters. There's different people I like controlling at different times. Even if I'm not being super tactical, it's just nice to be able to be... Uh, switching who you control for the, oh, I just went in a circle. Alright, let's backtrack. And go to the right. Yeah. Holy shit, there's a, how are there more Templars again? Alright, I'm going the right way though, right? Yeah, okay. At least I'm going facing the right direction. Man. I was here like one second ago. I'm not sure- I'm not really sure how there's another war zone happening here. I'm not sure that's how, like, the world works and how, like, physics and locations and things. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure they just spawned here the moment I looked, I looked away. Oh well. Pr I'm pretty much just continuing my my usual Solus jam. I've- Solus is, is thoroughly in a support role, and arguably so is Vivian. Uh... Basically, what I, I view him as someone who's there to make the whole- Oh, I used Dispel, but he- his uh, shield was already broken. I use him to help out the party, so... Uh, if you see- the, and you can see that value here, like, everything- everything is a support spell, basically. I don't even have, like, an Immolate equ equipped anymore because I got other spells. So I have Barrier- Barrier to keep my party alive. Uh, the Frozen spell to, uh, freeze an enemy to both... Uh, remove them from the action temporarily and to set up a combo. My two, uh, solo specific quests on the, uh, skills on the front of my skill tree right here. I mean, of my hotkeys. Those are both for AoE knockdown slash weaken. So they both primarily weaken because he has such a great synergy for weakening people. Which just makes them less effective in combat and more likely to die and all that, which is great. Look at all the numbers popping out because of Solus being awesome. And also probably other people in my party. <laughs> that, was a, that was an incomprehensible quantity of numbers coming out over there. But yeah, it definitely works out for me. And then, if, and then when you see my second page, I have, I have dispel to get rid of enemy barriers. I I can cast this too. I have the vortex that just draws everyone together, which is handy because all my other AOE abilities are more likely to hit more people if everyone's being drawn into the center, because they're less likely to be missed. And of course, I have uh, I have dispel and I have revive. So basically, the only the only purely offensive skill I use on this character is uh my meteor shower, which you know. Obviously, I'm going to equip a focus ability. It seems silly not to. So I bring that along as the last slot. Meanwhile, Vivian's focus... Uh, also kind of a support role, uh, because... Vivian's primary role is that, like, she's very hard to kill, and she gets her cooldowns up all the time, so she's great for being able to dispel and barrier and revive all the time. And she's good at keeping herself alive, but she doesn't necessarily have a ton of... If I remember correctly... Yeah, she, she also doesn't have a lot of offensive spells, but... Those two keep our good at uh, supporting the party. Vasti is virtually unkillable with her, all of his crazy tanking abilities. And then I bring a rogue along to be the uh, the party DPS. Although Vasti himself, partly because of his really good weapon, uh, I think it's Song of the Marshes. Someone asked me about the, that earlier. His weapon's so strong that it definitely helps too. And he has just generally, because he attracts so much attention, I think he also has an item. Shit, if, if I'm going to talk about this, I better check just to make sure it's real. If I remember correctly, Vasti has a piece of equipment. It's probably, I think it's a shield, actually. And it uh, gives him bonus damage. Yeah, 5% extra damage for, every, for each enemy within 8 meters. So that's scary. <laughs> he's a tank, and he's going to be aggroing a bunch of people at once. And he, his uh, shield makes him get 5% damage per enemy in 8 meters. 8 meters is a lot of range. Like, 
uh, most human beings, I believe, are like, what, like 1.5 to 2 meters tall? So, that's several heights worth of body. <laughs> Let's draw everyone into the middle here. Hey, look, everyone's AoE weakened. How convenient. Hey, look, everyone's AoE weakened. How convenient. Hey, look, everyone's AoE weakened. How convenient. <laughs> just draw everyone into the middle and just make a big old mess. There we go. Oh, crap. Wow, I get to spam another ice attack because of the cooldown didn't trigger. I just shot nothing over there. I, <laughs> the thing I was locked onto died, so I shot somewhere else. There's a senior warden. So there's a leader of the group. It is tragic that they're all con controlled because, yeah, they were... Uh, the Wardens and Templars have righteous goals, ultimately. Can't speak to individuals for every single one, but the, as a group, they have a righteous goal. So the, the, the idea that, they, that their, uh, their purpose has been corrupted by Corypheus does make them sort of tragic enemies. Is that Cullen? Is that... is that Cullen? Yeah, it's Cullen. Hey. Hey, Cullen. Is that... that's Cullen, right? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Cullen. He keeps moving around, so it's hard to put him in the middle of the camera, but he, he's kind of unmistakable with his, uh, his feathered shoulders that make him look like a character from the wall in Game of Thrones and the blonde hair. I've probably been passing various iconic characters on the way here. I mean, not account I mean, key characters. Like, I probably saw Leliana at some point or something, or, uh, I guess there's not a lot of other options because most of them are party members and could potentially be with me. It would be a really nice touch, though, if every single character I didn't bring with me in the party was somewhere in this fight. Just along the way, like you just see Iron Bowl and his chargers. That'd be neato. So, 12 out of 12 potions. No one has any missing hit points whatsoever, so I can't even buy. I can't even waste one just to justify using the cash. It's just gonna stay stay here unused. I do have one more point to spend though. So, I have everything in my entire champion tree except for the upgrade to my uh, area blocking ability, where I can make it a little bigger. But I'd rather probably go for something else. I could upgrade Shield Bash. As a general rule, it's good to go for passives at this point, just because they upgrade stuff without me having to replace things. I can do, uh... Oh, Damage Returned is not a terrible idea. Bodyguard. No, I don't want to grab anything that I'm already using. Let's see. I can get an Armor Bonus from Call to Arms, or I can do... Oh, Bonus Stamina Regeneration whenever I use Throw the Gauntlet. 15, 15 Stamina per second. That's probably good, because he uh, he's probably has a lot of uses of stamina. I'm going to go for that, just to keep getting more stamina back. I'm, this is probably very confusing to follow the builds that I use in these characters, because in this, even in this case, like I, I spend so much time showing how I spec the character, and then I respec them because I have a new, uh, a new class, and so things get confusing. Everyone's got really cool gear, by the way. In particular, uh, both Solus and Vivian are using, uh, like, purple quality ch uh, chess piece, I believe, that I've found along the way. Everyone's everyone's pretty decked out with really unique equi equipment, and Vasti, of course, has a Song of the Marshes, and his crazy shield gives him a damage modifier. I imagine something's gonna happen as soon as I- ooh! I missed something? Oh, there's a loot bag. I got focused on the supply cache and didn't look past it. Just some more hides. That's fine. That's okay. So, this looks like something has to happen when I walk through here, so. That must be the Temple of Mithal. Be ready. Corypheus will be there. I hear fighting ahead. Enter the Temple of the Temple of Mithal. I think I'm already in. Milana Sabanalen. They still think to fight us, Master. These are but remnants. They will not keep us from the Well of Sorrows. Well of Sorrows? Be honored. Witness death at the hands of a new god.
not be. Across the bridge, now! So we just saw Corypheus' face melt, and then he was reborn, even nastier looking than before. And the Archdemon's here. So things are looking up for us, right? Right? At last, Mathal's sanctum. Let us proceed before Corypheus interferes. Yes, indeed. We all heard Corypheus say he came for the Well of Sorrows, not an Eluvian. I am uncertain of what he referred to. You were guessing. Corypheus might not be after this Eluvian. It might not even be here. Yes, I was wrong. Does that please you? Whatever the Well of Sorrows might be, Corypheus seeks it, and thus you must keep it from his grasp. Let's find this well before Corypheus' people do. I want to know how Corypheus returned to life. We saw him die. And his life force passes on to any blighted creature, Darkspawn or Grey Warden. So how many times do we need to kill him? It's a small number, right? Strike Corypheus down, and he will rise anew. We'll find a way to stop him once we're done here. Tis strange. Archdemons possess the same ability, and still the Grey Wardens are able to slay them. Yet Corypheus, they locked away. Perhaps they knew he could do this, but not how. Oh god, Corypheus has the same power as Archdemons to just be reborn anew continuously just by possessing another body and this time we don't have a secret key to solve the problem because a Grey Warden we already knew, we already knew that a uh, an Archdemon did so by just going into the next uh, the nearest dark spot and possessing them and since we had Grey Wardens they could pretend to be dark spawn basically by consuming the blood and then when they killed it it possessed them and then they would just die the end you win so what's the secret for Corypheus? Can s oh, I wonder. Is there some way to, to gain Corypheus' as essence and trick him into possessing you and then somehow sub sabotaging yourself so that you just die when you're possessed instead? And if that kind of sacrifice happens in here, just like in Dragon Age Origins, well then who's going to do it? Is it going to be someone I know? Some random asshole? Me? If it's going to be me, I don't think it always has to be me because... I'm pretty sure this game can have a post-game, although it probably wouldn't if you died, but maybe maybe you don't have to die. Anyway, I'm looking for Temple of Mythal. There we go. The Temple of Mythal. Once again, Genitivi is completely at odds with reality. Ancient elven temples were no simple shrines. Extensive digging shows that buildings radiated out of the main edifice, much like a city wrapped around a palace. Indeed, these temple complexes must have been cities once, with a veritable army of functionaries running around them. Each cult had different rituals, ablutions, and prayers to their chosen patron that ran all hours of the day. The time and effort devoted to them must have been staggering. Perhaps it's best we have lost knowledge of these pagan rites. The deities that old elves worshipped, if they existed at all, were clearly demons masquerading as higher powers. One shudders to think of, one shudders to think of what went on before their thrones. From an essay by Atronus of Antiva, scholar and naturalist of the Antivan royal court. So mixed things there. It's possible that, uh... It's entirely possible that Genitivi is wrong about the whole thing about whether, whether or not the temples are ruins, but, uh... That person seems pretty biased in favor of the Chantry as far as whether or not, uh, the gods that, uh, the elves worshipped were legitimate or not. I noticed that Morgan has a speech bubble. Yes. Are you certain Corypheus is using the power of the Blight to make himself immortal? Perhaps you forget. I was in Ferelden during the Fifth Blight. 
I have seen a true Archdemon rage. How Corypheus gained the power to send his soul into blighted bodies, that is the real question. Will answering that question let us destroy Corypheus for good? Perhaps. I would suggest first dealing with the well. If Corypheus obtains it, any chance of success could be lost. Do you know what this part of the temple was used for? The room we stand in is a vestibule, not the temple proper. To those who knew it, perhaps this ritual was little more than a polite knock at the gate. These customs must have been as familiar to ancient elves as bowing to a queen is to you or I. I find it difficult to picture you curtsying to anyone. Why our dear Empress tolerated that is one of the mysteries of our age. Why, Madam Vivian? I expected sweeter barbs from a tongue as subtle as yours. Does this place unnerve you so? Or is it I? You unnerve me as would a cockroach crossing the floor, making me think new accommodations might be required. <laughs> Much better. You said this Mithal was worshipped as a goddess. So one assumes. What is a god but a being of immense power? The dread old gods were nothing more than dragons, after all. They rise as archdemons, and they die. Perhaps Mathal was a powerful elf, a ruler among her kind. History often plays storyteller with facts. You admit lack of knowledge, and yet dismiss her so readily? I do not dismiss her. I question her supposed divinity. One need not be a god to have value. Truthfully, I'm uncertain Mithal was even a single entity. The accounts are varied. There are varied accounts of Mithal. In most stories, Mithal rights wrongs while exercising motherly kindness. Let fly your voice to Mithal, deliverer of justice, protector of sun and earth alike. Other paint her as dark, vengeful. Pray to Mithal and she would smite your enemies, leaving them in agony. More Dalish tales. Soon. If you know more about this solar, speak. The oldest accounts say Mithal was both of these, and neither. She was the mother, protective and fierce. That is all I will say. This is not a place to stir up old stories. Whatever the truth, all accounts of Mithal end the same. Exiled to the beyond with her brethren. What do you mean, exiled? Tricked by the dread wolf, as all the elven gods were said to be, trapped in a land beyond the Fade. Many Dalish believe this is why the Elves fell from grace and their gods did not save them. Or perhaps they were simply rulers slain by Tevinter. Who can say? You've seen the Elves here. They seem... odd. Indeed. Two things are possible. One, this is a group of Dalish separated from their brethren, cultists, fanatic in their desire to keep humans away. Two, these are elves descended from the ancients having resided here since before the fall of Arlathan. The second appears unlikely, but if true, the implications are astounding. Is that even possible? How? With magic, anything is possible. Whatever the truth, the Guardians successfully kept the temple a secret. They must kill all who enter, even the Dalish. A more sensible question might be, why? Let's continue. As you wish. Well, the Temple of Mythal has a number of secrets to keep from us, it would appear. Well, back to Solus. What's that? They kill everyone who enter? Well, we better get in deeper. Sounds like a great life decision that will lead to a bright and happy future. I guess this is the kind of thing you go into when you're pushed by a Corypheus. We have more Red Templars here. Very dead and in awkward de dying positions. What's this blimp over here? Oh, just another blessing. A blessing in an awkward position where I can't necessarily even reach it either. It's kind of a bummer when they put them in spots like that, because it just... Yeah, I'm moving on. I'm just going to move on. <laughs> Trying to reach it just doesn't seem worth it. I see the Red Templars have already encountered the Temple's Guardians. Anything good on them? Rummage their corpses by all means. So what's on their corpse then? Gotta listen. I probably I should have uh, supplies replenished. 
Does that mean? Oh, maybe that would have. Maybe if I had done that, uh, after using potions, maybe my potions would be replenished. Maybe that's what they meant by supplies. The temple of Mithal, constructed in an age when elves, not men, dominated this land. They believed Mithal a goddess of justice. Elves came here to request judgment after they proved their work. Silence has reigned here for time beyond memory. So not a whole lot left of this place at this point. That's an interesting explanation for getting uh, our potions restocked for sure. Ooh, there's a side path that goes somewhere over here. Let's take a look-see. It's an interesting explanation for us getting more potions, because they, they want to keep having supply caches for potions in particular as we go through the, the uh, dungeon. It just makes sense. But... This is a place that's all locked off, so it doesn't make sense to just have a stash of potions just sitting around, unless you're going to say the Dalish made them, I guess. But, if we're just finding red Templars, well, those red Templars could have potions on them. Good move. Statue of Fenharal. This is the wolf god of the elves that we that we talked about being repurposed for Tevinter purposes. The rebel god. The Dalish use Her uh, Herilan to mean traitor to one's kin. But the word does not appear in any elven text before the tower's age. The ancient root word is related to har uh, harilin, or of opposition, to Helathen, or noble struggle. The Dalish call Fenharal a god of deception, but I posit a far more accurate translation would be god of rebellion. What he, what he rebelled against is a story lost to time. In Dalish legends, Fen Haral seals away the other deities out of love of trickery. If we understood more ancient elven, we might find earlier versions of the Dread Wolf's story give him more nuanced motivation beyond spite. From a treaty of the pagan and heretical customs of the elven by Sanelan Tavernier of the ancient, uh, University of Orlais, commissioned by Emperor Selene. Why would this be here? Something wrong. It depicts the dread wolf, Fen Harel. In elven tales, he tricks their gods into sealing themselves away in the beyond for all time. Setting Fen Harel in Mathal's greater sanctum is as blasphemous as painting Andraste naked in the Chantry. You're not the final expert on these ancient things. No one can be. There must be reason behind the mysteries. I refuse to believe we cannot tease them out. For all your knowledge, Lady Morrigan, you cannot resist giving legend the weight of history. The wise do not mistake one for the other. Pray tell, what meaning does our elven expert sense lurking behind this? None we can discern by staring at it. You two look like you're about to kiss when you argue. It is time we pressed forward. Agreed. <laughs> that shut them up. So, I'm getting the feeling that Solus knows more than he's letting on about all of this. And making a point to be vague about it. Oh my god, I'm trapped. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Sarah? Sarah was never the agreeable one. Uh, uh, so here's my theory here. Fen Harrell. Got, uh, known as being this trickster, uh, this trickster wolf that locked all the gods into another realm, uh, you know, for, for his love of, love of trickery, which is a weird explanation, and kind of weak, but it's distorted by history, I'm sure. I think that he may, the one, one thing is, maybe he did lock everyone here, maybe this has a Fen Haral statue in it, not because it's blasphemous, but this is actually the temple what if this temple is the location, the exact location, where all of the gods were locked into the other realm, into the uh, in beyond the veil, into the fade, and away from the mortal world? And so you have two things there to think about. Uh, maybe Van Hurl did this maliciously, and this is just a weird temple in his in his sort of subjected to his might. Or what if that wolf's a guardian? What if he's the guardian wolf? What if the what if all of the elven gods, w the old gods, willingly went into the fade? That's a it's a potential explanation. What if they removed themselves from our world intentionally to let it be? And what if Fen'Harel was left here to guard the entrance? What 
what if this is in some way some what if we're gonna find some sort of portal or entrance that leads to the fade and gives people access to that and if that's the case well I mean that would certainly give a reason for why Corypheus wants it because all he's trying to do is go there in his he's trying to go there in his mortal form or not in mortal form or not be accurate but you know in his physical form instead of in a dream that's his whole goal right now so if there's a straight up portal that takes you into the fade here it's like a, a gateway between the two worlds. Well, he'd sure want that. 